and I knew I always had the potential to kind of go on my own route, but a part of me felt like I just didn't have the willpower to go through it based off of the situations that I have come from, being in 15 different foster homes. I was hurt. You know, what, what the world offers a, a kid you know, heading in the wrong direction was not that I could be something special. It was that I had to avoid being something terrible. That was it. I'm on the right track. It's about time to start senior year, and I found out I was pregnant. I lived on the block where everybody was drug addicts. I lived on the block where there was quote unquote gang banging. And I just didn't want that part of life for myself. And I woke up from a coma and, you know, my dad had explained to me where I was, why I was there and, you know, what had happened. And I remember looking at my right side and seeing that I didn't have an arm and thinking like, wow, like my life is over. Uncle Cleve said, hey, there's two doors to get in. If I can't get through the front, I get in through the back. He didn't just take his ball and go home from the front door, all right? So at the end of the day, his money was in the bank. I never thought in my earliest visions would be a $100 million business. You can do anything that you want and apply this rule of entrepreneurship to it. By 2007, 2008, when we looked up, we were at over a million in sales. When I was 25 years old, I sold a company for 25 million bucks. I mean, if you don't push yourself out of your comfort zone, you know, you're never going to go anywhere. And I think that's a, a myth of entrepreneurship, that people think you need a college education, you need an MBA, it's got to be from Harvard, you need to know a bunch of VCs, you need to have a ton of money in your genes. It's not the way. And uh, there's plenty of people out there that have done it. A simple sort of ice house type way.